Hello, internet friends. I am Sixy. Even after recent nerfs, the Ruby Life Pulse has been a difficult dungeon to time. All three bosses have very tough tank and healer checks. And the reality is that as a tank, my ability to survive these bosses often starts two to three minutes earlier during trash mechanics. I have a perfect example of this happening in my run today on the second boss, Kokia Blazehoof. So while this is probably the easiest of the three bosses, we'll be starting here. If you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing. I'm very close to being partnered on YouTube, and if you want to help support me, check out our Discord at discord.gg slash the dash six. I have a Patreon type thing, and through there, for a couple of bucks, you can help support the dream. Let's jump in. To best illustrate why trash mechanics are super important for the outcome of this boss fight, let's start with the mechanics of the boss itself. The first mechanic Kokia will cast is Ritual of Blaze Binding. She casts this every time she reaches 100 energy. This will target a random range player. It will put a large red swirly on the ground, and if stood in, will deal massive damage. After the swirly expires, an ad will spawn that has a few mechanics. The first mechanic the ad will do is called Inferno. This will deal AoE damage and apply a dot to all players that ticks for additional fire damage every two seconds for a total of six seconds. Simultaneously, Kokia herself will cast Molten Boulder. It will target a random player and send a meteor down and roll towards the player's original location. If anyone is hit by the boulder, they will take a massive amount of damage, be knocked back, and stunned for three seconds. The boulder will continue in a line rolling for up to 40 yards and leave a fire patch behind it where it has traversed, and then a larger circular fire patch when it eventually explodes. Shortly after casting Inferno, the ad will cast Roaring Blaze. This cast is interruptible, but if allowed to cast, will deal massive AoE damage to the entire party. While the ad is casting Roaring Blaze, Kokia will do another mechanic called Searing Blows. This is a tank mechanic that hits the tank up to four times, dealing a ton of damage and applying Searing Wounds. A physical dot that also deals a ton of damage and stacks one time for each strike that successfully lands. It appears that it can be naturally dodged, and I didn't try it, but it also might be able to be shadow melded. Once the ad is brought to zero health, it will cast one more ability called Burnout, which will put a huge circle around. Anyone that gets caught in the circle will take a massive amount of damage. Once the circle has ended, it will leave behind a fire patch. If you stand in any of the aforementioned fire patches, you will take a tick of massive fire damage. More than one tick is not generally survivable, so positioning in this fight becomes a huge component of killing this boss. I will discuss positioning strategies in detail at the end of this video. Kokia will then cyclically cast all of her abilities over and over until defeated. On our first attempt, I died midway through the second cast of Searing Wounds, and the reason for this was that I didn't have Metamorphosis at my disposal. This is where our trash story begins. Roughly two minutes before engaging Kokia, my group, honestly, it might have been me, accidentally pulled three extra mobs. This, in and of itself, would not have been the end of the world, but it took me a minute to realize that the extra mobs were pulled, and two DPS ended up dying. Things got a little rough when the fire elemental did not die, due to the dead DPS, and to get through the pull, I had to use my major defensive. Since this is a huge chunk of the dungeon percent, let's quickly run through the abilities. Cinderbolt is just a cast that targets random players and deals fire damage. The more of these that can be kicked or CC'd, the less overall damage your group will incur. It also casts a buff on itself called Burning Ambition. This increases its own haste by 50%, but increases the damage it takes by 25%. Blazebound Destroyer, the fire elemental looking guy, first casts Living Bomb, which places a red circle around a player which deals fire damage every 2 seconds for 6 seconds. Upon expiration, it knocks the player up and deals moderate damage to the player and any other player within 12 yards. And unbeknownst to me, which I found out while researching this video, it also deals damage to any primalist inside the circle as well, knocking them up as well. The next cast the Blazebound Destroyer will cast is Inferno, an ability that deals fire damage to everyone in the party and places a dot on them that deals damage every two seconds for a total of six seconds. This is very similar to the Fire Elemental's cast inside the boss fight. Lastly, when the mob dies, it'll place a huge circle around itself and deal damage to anyone still inside of it at the end of the cast. Now the last mob, and the real reason why we are including trash in this guide, is the Primalist Flame Dancer. It has two abilities, the first, Flame Dance, a long cast which will deal fire damage to the tank every second, and once the cast has finished, deals massive AoE damage to the entire group. Fun fact though, the Living Bomb debuff ends almost exactly at the same time as the middle of the cast of Flame Dance, which means that the Blazebound Destroyer actually provides you a solution to this ability. However, you can also CC it, which is what we had been doing, which prevents a large amount of damage going out on the party. Once brought to roughly zero health, it will place a shield on itself, called Blazing Glory, which will deal AoE damage to the entire group and also send out red swirlies that have stood in basically one-shot you. 
This cast can be ended by offensively dispelling off the shield, DPSing through the shield, or presumably any ability that can remove shields, like Heroic Throw. We brought the trash mechanics up in this guide to get a better understanding of how things can go wrong during the boss fight. Assuming your trash poles go off without a hitch, we can go into the boss with almost all of our cooldowns intact. And with just a little bit of positioning from the tank and the group, we can have a clean boss kill. Before pulling the boss, tank, it's a good idea to mention to your group which way you'll be taking the boss, while also mentioning for everyone to stack on you. I personally like to pull Kokia into the space behind her. This helps min-max our space utilization. For the DPS and healer, your best bet is just stack on the tank. This will spawn the add from Ritual of Blaze Binding close and increase overall DPS uptime. From here, tank, you will want to keep moving the boss in a singular direction so that your group is stacked on you and that when they are targeted with Molten Boulder, it will actually traverse back into the fire already created by Burnout. Keep pulling in a consistent direction, rotating tanking cooldowns for searing blows, and at some point this boss will eventually die. Hope you found this video useful, and I'll see you out there in those keys. Peace.